Hello and welcome to this video by Perfect Scores. We are doing 11th grade biology. This is Preetinder Kaur and so far I have uh, discussed a lot of information about the basic features of different phylums. And we have done till phylum hemichordata and what we have to do in this video right now is phylum chordata. Before we get started with this phylum, don't forget to visit us at perfect-scores.com share and like our page at Facebook and give your valuable suggestions and feedback at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So the basic features of any animal belonging to this phylum core data um, include the presence of a notochord, presence of a dorsal hollow nerve cord, and paired pharyngeal gill slits. So these three features are an important um, uh, composition of this phylum cord. So I'll give you a little description of how the animal looks like. So this is a basically rough diagram of uh, how the animal should look like. The gill slits are present here. So these are the gill slits. This part over here, that is the post anal part. Now the notochord is present here, like this. It extends throughout the length. So this is the notochord. And then enclosed by a layer. This is known as the nerve cord. So these are the features. Gill slits, nerve cord, notochord and post anal part. Now all of these organisms they are having bilateral symmetry. They are triploblastic. And they are coelomates with a proper true body cavity. Additionally, they have an organ system level of organization. Additionally, they have a post anal tail and a closed circulatory system. So these are the common features and the next thing that we are about to do is a basic differentiation and comparison of chordates and non-chordates. So we're going to divide the screen into two chordates on this side and non-chordates on this side. The first basic difference is that the notochord is present in chordates and the notochord is absent in them. Second is that the central nervous system, it is dorsal, it is hollow and only one such system is there so that means it is a single system. Central nervous system in non-chordates that is ventral, it is double and it is also solid, it's not hollow. Another difference in chordates the pharynx is perforated by gill slits and in case of non-chordates, gill slits are completely absent. Another thing about the heart, the heart is ventral in case of chordates and if present, heart is dorsal. And it's not present in all, only if present, then it's going to be dorsal. And one more thing, the post anal part, which is usually a tail, is present. And the post anal part or the tail is absent. So that is the comparison of chordates with non chordates. So let's go ahead and find out how the phylum chordata is further divided into subphyla. So phylum chordata. On the basis of the features we've just done, are divided is divided into three basic subphyla. First is Eurochordata. data. 
or it is also known as tunicata the second one is cephalochordata and the third one is vertebrata now subphyla urochordata and cephalochordata are commonly known as proto chordates and they are exclusively marine in urochordata the notochord is only in the larval trail so i'm going to refer to notochord as this only in the larval tail in cephalochordata the notochord is from the head to the tail and it is persistent throughout the life it does not finish at any point of the life so that is the basic difference between them a few examples of urochordata include ascidia and salpa and examples of cephalochordata include branchiostoma coming to the third subphyla which is vertebrata they have a notochord only during the embryonic period so as you can see the basic difference is presence and absence of the notochord only due in the embryonic period when the embryo stage is finished and the next stage comes it is replaced by a cartilaginous so filled with either cartilage or bone that is called called as a vertebral column in the adult stage so the notochord gets replaced by this vertebral column in the adult stage so that means all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates besides these basic structures vertebrates have another um, a few other features as well for example they have um, a ventral muscular heart with two three or four chambers extra additional uh, feature is they have kidneys for excretion and they have um, appendages also that can be in the form of fins or in the form of limbs so let's quickly revise the difference between these three subphyla all right so i'm going to do that with the help of uh, this diagram that we've already made so phylum eucordata or tunicata and cephalochordata are commonly known as protochordates and they are all marine under eurochordata the feature is that the notochord is present only in the larval tail not in all stages and examples are ascidia and salpa in cephalochordata the notochord is present from the head to the tail and it is there throughout the life example is branchiostoma and the third one is vertebrata which is having notochord only in the embryonic period in the adult it is replaced by a cartilaginous or a bony structure called the vertebral column and a few extra features are that they also have a ventral muscular heart with two or three or four chambers kidneys are present for osmoregulation and excretion and fins or limbs are present as extra appendages so the next division that we have to know about is about the subphylum vertebrata so subphylum vertebrata it is composed of a division into two basic parts the first one is agnatha which do not have the jaws and the second one is nathostomata that have the jaws so we can say bears a jaw now further they are divided into different classes so agnatha is further divided into only one class which is class 
साइक्लोस्टोमैटा दिस नैथोस्टोमैटा इज फर्दर डिवाइडेड इन टू टू सुपर क्लास सो वी विल राइट हेयर सुपर क्लास वन ऑफ देम इज स्पाइसिस विच कंटेन्स फिंस the other one is tetrapoda that bear limbs so coming to pisces they further have two classes one is class chondrich thighs and the other one is class ostrich thighs and coming to the super class tetrapoda that have limbs there are four classes one is class amphibia class reptilia class aves and class mammalia so let's uh, go through this division once again so you have the subphylum vertebrata that is converted into two divisions agnatha without the jaw so that is class cyclostomata then you have the division nathostomata which bears a jaw that is divided into two super classes one is pisces the ones that have fins so that is class chondrich thighs and class Och, ostrich thighs and coming to tetrapoda the ones that bear limbs you have class amphibia class reptilia class aves and class mammalia so going forward we are going to discuss each of these classes one by one each of these seven classes that we have one by one so we begin with class cyclostomata an example of this is the common lamprey which is also known as petromyzon so let's look at the features that are there in this class first of all all of them are ectoparasites on some fishes that means they live like a parasite but on the outer surface the second feature is they have an elongated body that bear 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits additionally they have cyclostomes uh, that have a sucking and a circular mouth without jaws sucking and a circular mouth so we've already done that jaws are not present the other feature is that they don't have scales or paired fins they don't have jaws they don't have scales they also don't have any paired fins in addition to this they have cranium and the vertebral column that are cartilaginous that is made up of cartilage the cranium and the vertebral column circulation is closed closed circulatory system they are marine but for spawning they can go to the fresh water as well so fresh water is usually for spawning and breeding purposes after spawning within a few days they die so a short life span of a few days only their larva after metamorphosis they return to the ocean back again so the larval stage is present so let's uh, just revise these features the example is petromyzon which is the lamprey they are ectoparasites a long body with 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits additionally they have a sucking and a circular mouth jaws scales and paired fins are absent the cartilage is there in the cranium and the vertebral column 
closed circulatory system they usually live in marine water but come to the fresh water for spawning and after spawning after a few days they die but the larva they are able to escape back to the ocean through the help of metamorphosis and they develop there the next class that we have to do is class chondrich thighs so class chondrich thighs these are all marine animals with a properly streamlined body well equipped for swimming they have an cartilaginous endoskeleton additionally the mouth is located ventral a ventral mouth the notochord is present throughout life gill slits are separate without the gill cover and there is no gill cover gill cover is also known as operculum additionally their skin is tough contains minute placoid scales teeth are modified scales that are backwardly directed teeth are backwardly directed okay and their jaws are really powerful they don't have an air bladder the air bladder is completely absent in them and that is why they have to constantly swim so that they do not sink and about the heart the heart for them is two chambered that means one auricle and one ventricle some of them have electric organs also like in the electric eel some have the poison stings for example in trigon electric organ and poison steel so these are means of defense poison sting they are cold blooded that means they are poikilothermous they are cold blooded organisms that means they cannot thermoregulate their own body the sexes are separate and in the males the pelvic fins they have claspers the fertilization is internal additionally the many of them are viviparous that means they give birth to live offspring they don't lay eggs examples are dogfish another example is sawfish the stingray and the great white shark so let's revise this class of chondrich thighs they are marine streamlined cartilage is there in the endoskeleton they have a ventral mouth and the notochord is there throughout the life the gill slits are separate there is no operculum or the gill cover the skin is tough and they have placoid scales that are modified into teeth that are back backwardly directed the jaws are really powerful air bladder is not there their heart has two chambers the auricle and the ventricle either they can have an electric organ or sometimes they have a poison sting they are cold blooded or poikilothermous and cannot thermoregulate their body temperatures the males usually have a pelvic fin with claspers fertilization is internal they are viviparous and examples are the great white shark the dogfish the sawfish and the stingray so that is all that we'll be covering in this video otherwise it's going to get really lengthy and from the next video onwards we are going to discuss uh, from class ostich thighs onwards so thank you so much for watching this video